epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. We've talked about many weird and obscure roller coasters before on this channel, but there are just so many of them out there, they deserve more than one video. Recently I conducted a poll with my viewers with several bizarre roller coasters to choose from, so as voted on by the fans, here are just some of the many unusual roller coasters ever built. Number 10. Inversa Brazil's Aqua Locos made in-house by the park. Located on the South Brazilian coast, Aqua Locos is a full-fledged resort with a hotel and a plethora of entertainment options. The resort features a paintball arena and even helicopter rides. As if all of that wasn't enough, there's also a small amusement park for guests to enjoy. This park features a variety of attractions, but only one truly stands out for its strangeness. Introducing La Inversa, an inverted shuttle coaster that was actually made in-house by the park itself. Since it was made independently, the ride comes with a few unique quirks to it. First of all, the track structure looks like less of a roller coaster and more like a dead-end electrical tower. Second, take a look at the front car. For some reason, the back half of a seat completely blocks the view from the front. It's unknown why it's there, and it's a peculiar design choice to say the least. Moreover, the restraints are made entirely out of metal, something you usually don't see on roller coasters. The ride itself is as simple as can be, with guests being lifted forwards onto one end before plunging backwards towards the other. The train rocks back and forth for a while before the ride slows down enough to activate the brakes. As of right now, it is the only operating inverted shuttle coaster in South America, and one of only five operating inverted coasters in the entire continent, so it's a pretty rare find worth checking out. Number 9. Looping at France's Parc Saint Paul, made by French manufacturer Soke. This is one coaster that the park would undoubtedly like to forget about. Powered coasters usually use contacts on the rails to send electricity to power a motor on the ride vehicle, allowing it to be less dependent on gravity and have more of a compact layout. Ordinarily, these coasters aren't built to be thrill rides and are usually family attractions with mild layouts. Well, one French company named Soked decided to take the powered coaster to a whole nother level. This company was actually daring enough to add a vertical loop to their powered coaster model and a rather tight one at that. Through the use of electrical power and several small motors on the train, this coaster was able to forego a small lift hill and send riders zooming through the course right from the start. The train would start by maneuvering an upwards helix straight out of the station before speeding up further on a section of straight track. After a bank turn to the left, the track heads downwards towards the vertical loop. Although the first part of this loop is powered, the train completes the rest of the course with its own momentum, making this a partially powered coaster. The train would then maneuver the course for a second time before stopping at the station. After a lengthy run in the French fair circuit, it would be moved to Parc St. Paul for the 2003 season. It seemed like a rather unique and entertaining roller coaster at first, but just two years after it opened at Parc St. Paul, disaster struck. On July 17, 2005, one of the cars actually derailed during the loop. Four people were injured and the ride was closed shortly afterwards. After a year of sitting standing but not operating, it would be removed from the park. Number 8. Los Simpson at Spain's Holiday World, made by an unknown manufacturer. Not to be confused with the acclaimed theme park in Indiana, Spain's Holiday World is a small amusement park on the island of Gran Canaria. This park once featured a coaster that pretty much had copyright infringement written all over it. This kiddie coaster named Los Simpson is named after the long-running animated series The Simpsons. While the bottom of the ride structure does feature illustrations of Simpsons characters, the rest of the ride has nothing to to do with the series. Let's look at the train from front to back. We have Simba, Adam West's Batman, Disney's Big Bad Wolf, the Red Power Ranger, and Raphael from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If the Sense of Right internet meme was a coaster, this would be it. You can also find illustrations of several Disney characters on the ride structure, and you really have to wonder what went into the design process of this ride. Most likely, this was originally meant to be a traveling fair coaster, drawing kids to ride it with its many colorful characters. And it's unlikely any major media company would bother claiming copyright infringement over a small kiddie coaster in the Canary Islands. Sadly, this head-scratching masterpiece was removed in early 2019 as an effort to renovate the park. It is unknown what will happen to it, but we're very lucky to have it documented. 
Number seven, Pipeline Express at Ohio's Putt and Pond Speed Park. Made by Canadian manufacturer Bailey Rides. Some roller coasters are wooden, some roller coasters are steel, but did you know that there was once a plastic coaster? You may remember the auto sled from my 10 rare and unique roller coasters video. This now extinct coaster model featured small plastic sleds that each sat one person, and guests would strap themselves in with a seat belt. In 1986, the first auto sled debuted at Fostoria, Ohio's Putt and Pond Speed Park. While the structure and ties were made of steel, the rails were were actually constructed from plastic PVC pipes. Yes, the same material that hooks up septic systems. This is the kind of thing you'd see on a backyard coaster, and not one you'd see at an operating amusement park. Nevertheless, the ride proved to be quite popular, and would operate all the way until the early 2000s. It's unknown how the park maintained the plastic rails, or why exactly the coaster closed, but the fact that it existed is truly fascinating. Number 6, the Rollerball Model, made by Swiss manufacturer Ride Engineers Switzerland. Remember the dizzy dropper from Roller Coaster Tycoon 3? Well, 14 years after the game came out, this roller coaster would become reality. In 2018, Ride Engineers Switzerland would introduce the Rollerball, a family coaster with one of the most unusual designs you'll ever see. Passengers board the ride vehicles at the bottom, sitting parallel to the sideways track. They are then sent up a vertical lift before descending into the course. The layout consists of several sharp downwards turnarounds, making it resemble a wild mouse flipped on its side. With each dip downwards, a brake is applied. Ordinarily, putting a brake at the drop would kill a ride's fun factor, but there's a special reason for this braking system. The ride vehicles are designed to swing back and forth, but not flip. Hitting the brakes causes a sudden shift in momentum that causes riders to swing even more than they would without the brakes. This allows the ride to be more enjoyable to families, and even a few hardcore enthusiasts say the ride was better than expected. The first of these coasters would open at Germany's Schwaben Park. This ride, named Wilde Hilde, would be themed to a chicken coop, featuring several chickens scattered throughout the structure, an egg display in the queue line, and a rather eccentric theme song. Just take a listen to this. <laughs> Yes, that is a clucking sound. Pretty awesome if you ask me. More recently, a much bigger rollerball would open at Francis Park Spiru, and would be themed to the Franco-Belgian comic character Marsupilami. Still though, while the one in France is bigger, Vilda Hilda's more elaborate theming makes it stand out much more. Look for more rollerballs to be installed in the coming years. Number 5, the Gliding Coaster model, made by French manufacturer Reverchon. Imagine taking a wild mouse and reimagining it as a suspended coaster. That's exactly what French manufacturer Reverchon did with this creation. Currently exclusive to traveling fairs, there are only two of these coasters operating in the entire world, one named Ala Delta and the other named Euro Coaster. Both of these coasters feature one-row trains that each seat four people. Just like a wild mouse, the course features several switchback turns and a few dips. However, the ride vehicles have the added bonus of rocking guests side to side. For every turn, you'll find yourself swinging in the opposite direction. Another unique aspect to this ride is the queue line. At its annual installation at London in England's Hyde Park Winter Wonderland, it is rebranded Christmas Coaster and features a funhouse style queue line complete with rollers and rotating platforms. Despite its standout features though, the ride as a whole has received a negative reception from enthusiasts. YouTube user Changa says, It's horrendous. I'd recommend it for the credit, but every time it banks, you get lurched forward then rattled to death in the corners. YouTube user Swant No Limit says, It felt like they threw out the designer halfway through the development. And YouTube user, another Swiss YouTube user said, The drops are really fun, but the rest is kinda boring. Despite this criticism though, Chinese manufacturer Golden Horse released their own unauthorized version of this coaster, but would you believe that the knockoff version is actually considered to be better than the original? Notable enthusiast Richard Bannister agrees. Although he was a harsh critic of the Revershawn version, Bannister said the Golden Horse version, quote, had one rough transition towards the end of the course, but for the most part was good fun. It just goes to show you can't judge a coaster by its manufacturer. Number 4, the Illusion Model, made by Dutch manufacturer Vacoma. Once upon a time, Vacoma created a brand new family coaster 
coaster model named the Illusion. Since then, it has become known as one of the most unique and bizarre indoor roller coasters in existence. First opening at Tennessee's defunct Opryland as Chaos, only two of these rides were ever built, and the only one remaining is Revolution at Belgium's Babyanland. This coaster model is notable for having an insanely long train. The one on Revolution has 30 cars, and the one on Chaos was even crazier at 40 cars. That's quite a lot of passengers. As a result, this coaster has a maximum capacity of around 1,200 riders per hour with one train alone, which is just 300 less than the capacity of Fury 325 at Carowinds. In addition to the lengthy train, the layout itself is equally unusual. Starting off with a long spiral lift, passengers can view a projection screen on the ceiling as dreamlike background music plays. After the lift, the train descends a long layout consisting of a long, wavy, downward spiral, with the ride ending shortly afterwards. The ride experience isn't going to blow you away, but its distinctiveness alone makes it a must ride for rare credit seekers. Number 3. The Tower Coaster Model, made by Italian manufacturer SBF Visa. If you thought the Gerslauer Eurofighter had a steep decline, just look at the SBF Tower Coaster. This compact looping coaster was originally designed for traveling fares. Its small layout is both easy to set up and easy to transport from fare to fare. Said layout consists of a vertical lift and a small vertical loop with an unorthodox P-shaped drop in between. This drop is so steep, many believe that it's the steepest drop on Earth, though its angle of descent has never been recorded. In the beginning, the Tower Coaster made its debut in the fare circuit under the name Cool and Fresh. After a few years, it then made its way to the Netherlands Dippy Doe, though it was never actually installed there. But just recently, this coaster has reportedly resurfaced at Turkey's Wonderland Eurasia under the name Migfer, which is the Turkish word for helmet in English. It is set to have a new Viking theme, though it is yet to open at the park as of yet. Once it does though, it'll be sought after by thrill-seeking travelers around the world. Number 2. The Queen Bee AR28 Model, made by Italian manufacturer Pinfari. Since the 1970s, Pinfari's wax Wacky Worm model has become one of the most popular roller coaster designs in history, and has been replicated by countless other companies. These simple, easy to construct kitty coasters consist of a single lift hill, a few turns, and in some cases, a large apple structure that the trains maneuver through. It is perhaps the most common coaster model on Earth, but the same can't be said about its sister model. Believe it or not, Pinfari decided to take this simple concept and morph it into an inverted coaster. This rare family coaster model is officially known as the Queen Bee AR28, with the AR standing for Ape Regina, which is Italian for Queen Bee. So the coaster is literally called the Queen Bee Queen Bee 28. Wrap your head around that. As for the coaster itself, it unquestionably takes inspiration from the original Wacky Worm. The layout is extremely small, focusing more on turns and accessibility for small children than flat out thrills. And instead of a large apple, the lift hill takes guests through a large beehive. Though perhaps the tamest invert ever made, it's still a cute design that's sure to win over kids. However, only two of these were said to have been made. One operated at Argentina's Center Norte from 1999 to 2007, while another continues to operate at England's Bottoms Pleasure Beach. Though it is unusual to see an invert this small and mild, there's no doubt that countless English enthusiasts got their start on this ride, and it's likely to inspire more potential thrill seekers for years to come. Before the number one spot, here are a couple of honorable mentions that just didn't make the cut. First up is Roller Coaster at Bangladesh's Tamina World. This may seem like an ordinary wacky worm, but one aspect of this ride made it worthy of a mention. There are absolutely no brakes on this coaster. Instead, the ride uses the lift hill chain to bring the train to a stop. This means, of course, that guests must board the vehicle while it's sitting on the lift hill, and the station is literally a large staircase, with the front row boarding towards the top. A unique specimen of a coaster to say the least. Next up is Maria Hunen at Denmark's Brannigelshaven. Also known as Ladybug in English, Maria Hunen sits on a tiny Danish island. The coaster consists of a single ride vehicle that can sit one parent and one small child. No electricity is used on the ride, so passengers must physically push the car up the lift hill before boarding and heading downwards. It's definitely a kiddie coaster, and parents can easily push their kids up the lift. Now just imagine having to push Fury 325 up its lift hill. I'll bet your arms hurt just from the thought of it. Number 1. The Astral Model, made by Italian manufacturer Fabri. Fabri is well known for their numerous inventive flat rides, but did you know this company also has a few roller coasters in their resume? First they created a Wacky Worm model, one of which received the name Wallace's Wonderful Wriggling Whirl Wacky 
worm, a weird name indeed, but not a weird coaster model on its own. No, that honor would have to go to their astral model. This strange coaster model won my pole in a landslide victory, and one look at it makes it easy to see why. First of all, the layout is completely unorthodox. Not only does it have an emphasis on banked helixes, but it also features a straight downwards track section that's banked to the side. By far the strangest thing about this coaster is the fact that riders are literally instructed to cross their legs while on board. The first installation named Mirage Rosso at Italy's Fasano Landia actually features a sign instructing guests to do so. This sign says, Importante, sulla giostra, tenere la gambe incrociate which means, on the carousel, keep your legs crossed. Now this is a roller coaster and not a carousel, but at least that's what Google Translate says it means. It's unknown why exactly these instructions are necessary, but there may be an answer. Many have speculated that if passengers choose not to cross their legs, which is often the case based on recorded footage, they run the risk of hitting their feet on the ride supports. This is evidenced by leg guards being placed on the second installation at Kazakhstan's Fantasy World. Crossing your legs while sitting down does put more room between you and the floor, so this at least seems very likely. The fact that you need to cross your legs on a roller coaster is undeniably bizarre, and with that rule alone, it's a worthy number one. Before we wrap things up, I just want to give a special shout out to my two new Patreon supporters. Verbal shoutouts start at the gold tier, so if you don't hear your name, it will be listed at the end of the video. Here is a special shout out to Lubba and Wasatch Coasters. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can find a link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at ThemeParkCrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.